Hi everyone. Welcome back to our podcast again. And this time we have a very very interesting topic and very interesting guests. So today we have dog lovers with us and we have Akhila and Nisha with us. Hi Akhila. Hi. Hi Nisha. Hi. It's a pleasure to have both of you here. Thank you. And of course uh, dear Anand. Hi. Hi. Is always there helping us with the recordings and pitching in for everything. So Akhila my first question goes to you. Mhm. What all aspects should we pay attention to while approaching a stray dog considering many of us may be hesitant initially Okay if you are a dog lover it's not going to be a problem at all because you okay. know exactly what to do and the dog will also be able to judge you the dog in- inherently realizes recognizes a dog lover whenever he sees one and the intentions when they are absolutely pure and clear then there is really no problem the problem comes when there is a fear inside you in your heart if there is a fear and some of the dogs they have these trust issues okay. especially if they have had a uh, turbulent past if they have had childhood trauma or lot of uh, roadside trauma then they will have trust issues then at that time you have to be very gentle about it first of all no touch initially absolutely okay, no, touch. no touch be totally uh, clear uh, in your signals don't send any mixed signals just uh, 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 with your hand you can just signal and say mmm, you know make those noises immediately it will get attracted to you okay. and uh, slowly approach you sometimes if it starts barking or if it's showing those you know, again a dog lover can recognize these signals yeah. you know inherently you can just recognize whether the dog is trusting you or uh, uh, liking you so you will accordingly uh, change and modify your behavior don't be in a hurry to touch any dog just let the dog come and smell you completely okay. most of the time you yourself will have lot of doggy smells in you i am speaking for myself then again everything gets clear the dog knows that okay fine everything is going to be fine and so that's it so uh, these things just input. work out huh? that's so a great thing you need to take time to build trust uh-huh. yeah with a dog or yeah uh, nisha this question is for you what all food varieties should be given to indie dogs are we supposed to give bones to them because i've seen your dog and do you give bones to them should we to these indie dogs yeah. hi rachi it's a pleasure to speak on this topic thank you so much so initially we used to give the dog everything the only thing we understood because mine is an indie dog we adop- adopted her from right. friendly goes and heads up for tails okay and she is absolutely so adorable actually she gives us more joy in our life that we are blessed to have the dog very true right. so um initially we only as far as i understood no meetha basically no okay. sweets but now i realize that you have to modulate her eating so usually she she's a when i had my original dog who right. was also an indie dog who was okay. peanut we gave uh, he used to we made him a vegetarian but in case of hazel she's a total non veg she will not eat without chicken okay. so she has chicken she has roti not too much and she has two meals a day the only problem with hazel is that she loves biscuits okay. so we give her mari biscuits i think the basic thing is that you don't give chocolate don't give sweets and you modulate that i modulate the diet that's the okay quote and quote i have a slightly different take in this okay uh, as far as indie dogs are concerned okay you uh, uh, all my life i've kept in indie dogs every dog uh, comes and stays for 12 13 years and then we decide no more dogs okay. till the next one walks in <laughs> that's been my thing so out of personal experience i can tell you okay no doubt the vet says and everyone says no meetha no namak no namkeen but practically the indie dogs they are suitable to all sort of diets okay, so all my life i have given all meetha and all namkeen okay. to the dogs and they've all lived 12 13 16 years now my present dog so that's my take on it and you being a doctor yeah. you would know exactly i mean just feel right. free with an indie dog you just don't have to bother milk or sweet or sugar salt anything so except chocolates i course. agree i agree with that <laughs> okay. as, as far as my other dog was concerned when you're not aware it's great we not say it everything <laughs> yeah now in the modern day yeah. age when they tell you that's where i'm modulating huh. yeah. i i i that's strongly feel it's these pedigree and the dog food promoted concept oh, yeah. not uh, house are, concept We are indie dogs. Yeah, we are total desis on this. Huh. Absolutely. Always better. Yeah. 
Uh, what are the rules around taking injured street dog to hospital? Uh, Dr. Akhila, what do you have to say on that? Okay, so uh, first and foremost, uh, remove the dog from the... What is the procedure? The, huh? So remove the dog from the uh, place where it can already, it can get further injured. Like if it's lying in the middle of the road, somehow you see to it, stop the vehicles and just pull the dog back to safety. And best is to like, you know, keep a rug or a bed sheet and somehow drag the uh, uh, animal on the uh, sheet so that you can lift the sheet in toto. Instead of trying to lift the animal, you just uh, uh, whatever bed sheet, thick bed sheet or something you are taking, uh, drag it and uh, 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 transport can become easier if you handle the sheet rather than the dog. That is one thing. Second, there are a lot of uh, organizations which take care of dogs. Can you name dog. some hospitals also for Haan, us? So, uh, one, is for Friendicos, one is Friendicos, the other is uh, Sanjay, uh, Sanjay Gandhi Memorial Hospital. Yeah, That's mentioned. very good. And the Motibag uh, Vet Clinic. These are three absolute free places which okay. do total free of cost. Uh, and they even send their own vehicles in case of large animals. And they have these animal volunteers who come and pick up the animals also, even if you can't transport it. Nisha, should we train an adopted street dog or let it be the way it is? What do you think about that? So, in my case, I believe some little training is required. Okay. S not too much because that will take the originality of the dog away. So, I had a trainer uh, for Hazel. There is a particular way to walk a dog. So, you know, you do, otherwise the dog will walk you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, therefore, that's what happens. That's in my case. Yeah. Yes. So, so, for these small things, like, you know, just to train the dogs to sit and when you're feeding it or to walk when you must hold the leash tightly otherwise okay. the dog will walk you not you walk the dog okay. but beyond that training is not required because my father used to say that you can't make them into monkeys you know like clowns dancing <laughs> for you so train them only to the extent necessary is what I believe my dog doesn't get on to sofas that's a training she oh, automatically nice. good no beds nothing of course, when she was teething, she chewed furniture, but we have, we've trained her just enough. Just enough. a bit of this. Mm. Very true. So, Akhila, this one came from a little kid I knew in my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. How are dogs so fit? The child asked me one day, and what can we learn from them? Okay, there's innumerable <laughs> things that you can learn from a dog. First of all, you learn how to love and how to, how to make friendship instantly, how to trust instantly, how to, uh, uh, you know, gauge the mood of the other person. A dog automatically teaches you to be a best friend, to teaches you to be a brother, a sister, a mother or a father. What right. more? Uh, you, you learn life and you learn death about a dog. Most important, they teach you, even in their death, they teach you how to uh, go away from this world and how to deal with death. The best lesson a child can have, uh, well uh, uh, you know, uh, you get to see both life and death from very close quarters if you are living with a dog. That's the most important uh, lesson they teach you. Apart from so many other things, they teach you how to live. I mean, they teach you to live in the moment, in the present moment. A dog does not live in the past. It li lives in the instant moment and complete joy. It teaches you how to be happy for no reason. Right. <laughs> so, just I'll add to no, your sure, sure. Sure. Uh. So, Michael Douglas had said in Wall Street, if you want a friend, keep a dog. Yeah, a dog absolutely. <laughs> they are, they, uh. their unconditional love. Yeah. Totally. I don't think any, any no human being, whether really, it's a really. parent, a child, yeah, yeah. can give the unconditional yeah. love a yeah. dog can. And come Nisha, how do your uh, colony dogs uh, communicate with each other? Do they fight? <laughs> yes. Uh, we have a lot of dogs okay. Okay. next to our house. And uh, Hazel only has to see a dog and she will run as if she owns the place. <laughs> and the moment another dog comes yeah. to her, she'll run the other way. <laughs> so there are a lot of dogs and, uh, and, and internally they decide their territory and right. fight and whatever. And you hear them barking, but otherwise it's fine. I mean, well, I ha we've got lots of dogs and I haven't heard a case of one dog injuring the other or the dog biting anybody on the road. The stray dogs. You know, sometimes people get confused with uh, when dog is playing with the other dog. They usually seem like even they are fighting, but they are not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. correct. Huh. Yeah. Even when they are yeah. trying to uh, actually bite each, each they don't other, know how to play. they just it's test the, the bite. <laughs> huh. They just nibble at each yeah. other and test the bite. What is the bite strength? How much to bite? Uh, they yeah. just test it out. You like I have two Indies right now. They they are happily playing about with each other all the time, biting each other, but it's not really bite bite. 
it is just you know taking each other's uh, uh, different yeah. parts of their bodies in their mouth and just nibbling and i call it love bite <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So I read somewhere like you know the nipping thing actually uh, hmm. a small dog when they nip to a nip to a hmm. larger dog a hmm. big a dog so they actually learn from the uh, the amount of uh, stretch they are using yeah yeah exactly so, like, to test they, it they, out if they uh. if they make sound they get to know that this is not, ha, ha, not ha. the way I yeah they warn each other that now yeah. it's getting too much so so they they, uh. they teach actually yeah, absolutely <laughs> what a contrast of people sitting here <laughs> so me anand we also dog lovers mm. and but we have breeds we have breeds like Sense i have a golden breed. retriever mm. yes we have a lot of dog like i had like two german shepherds then beagle then now i have a husky mm-hmm. so i adopted my husky from a friend okay yeah. we were really inspired to meet both of you because um we have so many dogs in our country mm. and uh, we are all dog lovers and why not do what you both are doing yeah. and we really want you both to inspire our audience as well i think it's really commendable and i really appreciate that okay. so one last question to you all okay do you really think you can save all the stray dogs in the world see this is the question i get frequently asked because uh, everyone asks me ki how many can you adopt how many can you save but believe me it does make a difference to that one particular dog that you adopt it makes a difference to that shera khushi mishti hazel these are the dogs we are, it makes a difference but more than that it makes a great difference to the child that is coming in contact with that one dog it right. completely changes the uh, world for that child i mean the dog teaches you so much it just uh, you just let a dog and that to a desi dog come into your room come into your house and just see the magic unfold it changes the entire household completely Nisha, so it same. definitely makes I a difference i feel the same way and i also believe that you should adopt these dogs not only because of the unconditional love all dogs give it but it's such a joy to see these dogs grow up and it also sends a message out where inbreeding is happening and dogs are being bred cocker spaniels are being bred with other dogs mixed up their temperaments change and all that right. it sends a message that there are dogs who need adoption and you don't encourage illegal business where there's inbreeding and all that and therefore i believe one should have indie dogs why because also they are well adjusted to the environment hmm. they know the Absolutely. heat they know winter yeah. they know the country huh. they fall ill less huh. they are totally lakkad hazam patthar hazam they can actually tolerate any kind of food anything yeah, wow. very low wow. maintenance wow. they cost very less no grooming no so absolutely ha huh? and the thing is hazel huh. when she was spayed and her organs were taken out she recovered in half a day mm. that's how much wow. it took mm. and while in pain she knew that it's mm. not good to uh, be in the house mm. she walked in pain when yeah, she was yeah. seven months outside mm. to the mm. garden peed and came yeah they somehow drag yeah. themselves out in that condition yeah. pee outside yeah. and so come they are that yeah. well adapted they so get trained pretty easily and she was back yeah. the doctor said it will mm. take 3 4 days she mm. was back to normal the next mm-hmm. day mm-hmm. yeah very very resilient the for the simple reason great. yeah their their genes totally meant for our uh, climate and uh, suitable for that as against that let me also say right. see all said and done a siberian husky is meant to be in siberia german mm. shepherd in germ uh, saint bernard in a uh, uh, swiss alps yeah. so if that dog you are getting it here in the delhi summer and chennai summer and expected to uh, uh, adapt to, adapt to right. this condition first of all very high maintenance and all the difficulties plus there is so much of inbreeding of the foreign dogs and so much of underbreeding of our own indigenous dogs we have wonderful ex- uh, indigenous uh, uh, exotic breeds which are practically going right. extinct now you know rajapalayam chippi parai the mudhold hound the rampur hound these are all very good indian dogs which actually belong to the royal family and that is getting uh, extinct now practically oh, extinct yeah yeah and and us. thankfully thankfully the indian army has now yeah. taken these dogs into consideration and they are adapt adopting them in their uh, practically inducting them in their services because they make excellent guard dogs they bo- uh, guard our borders uh, territory uh, uh, guarding is being done by these Good dogs now. Also. yeah yeah Uh, Kumaon Mastiff yeah. uh, so many of them so are there So was there any story behind both of you adopting these dogs was there something which inspired to you to keep these indie dogs was there something which came in your mm-hmm. mind or some 
something so which the, it's very odd i had a indie dog first so right. my brother wanted to adopt the dog so in, in the wind chilly winter he put this little pup his friend had a litter right. and his friend said please take the bully pup away so my brother put him in a coat on a bike and brought him home and my mother was said we'll send the dog back next day because right. we didn't she didn't want to keep a dog my brother came to me and said you can convince them when i spoke to my mother peanuts stayed and he <laughs> passed on for at 14 oh, and see. i saw his last breath on my lap oh. it was like a, i could see his spirit going out mm. he waited for me to come mm. so the inspiration and hazel came because my younger daughter wanted a and hazel chose us she came to us oh. and my husband said i want a dog who's small and you know not too noisy not too yappy right. she came he saw her and <laughs> I Rest think it's a bigger history. dog yeah, yeah. than us. <laughs> Very true. They say that the dog chooses you. You yeah. don't choose the Same dog. Same for you. Yeah. yeah. For me, I had a, a childhood incidents where I actually saw two a group of uh, street urchins, two dogs. They had tied it uh, tail to tail, and they were pelting stones at it. That day, I decided that I have to really be closely associated with the cause for uh, animal welfare. Right. And uh, that day, I decided whichever dog I am keeping, it's going to be a stray dog only, and not oh. any. Dogs. So I was very clear from the childhood. It's really, really yeah, inspiring. inspiring. Yes. Inspiring. So many things uh, myself because I've got a dog which is a golden retriever, and I think I'm really inspired by both of you. Yeah. And I'm sure our audience also, somebody there listening to them, would be surely inspired to adopt an indie dog. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for being here, Nisha. It's a pleasure. <laughs> Thank you so much, Akila. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Just each one, just adopt a dog. That's it. <laughs> That's all we want. Including Rachi and Anand. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank really you so much.